The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. For our daily social media minute, we're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. Happy <laughs> Tuesday. How cold is it outside? I haven't even stepped out yet. It's it's kind of unbearable. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Local listeners, brace yourselves for the frigid cold layer of a bundle of do everything you can to protect yourself from uh, plunging temperatures. Uh, all right. Uh, when I saw this news report last night, I kind of got excited because it, it's about time we catch... The strawberry thief hmm. that, you know, in the middle of the night came out of nowhere, seemingly that is, and stole buckets of strawberries. Yeah, we talked about the story last week, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about the story of how uh, somebody uh, had stolen hundreds of kilograms of strawberries uh, from local farms, local greenhouses in the city of Kimhae in Gyeongsang Namdo province. Um, it's actually been a while since the, the stolen strawberries were first reported. It's been almost a month, actually. Mm. And uh, a man uh, has finally been caught in relation to the theft. A man in his 50s has been uh, caught for stealing large quantities of strawberries from a local farm, again, um, about a month after the local farmers reported mm. the missing fruit to authorities. Um, so the West Kimhae police station announced the arrest of this uh, 50-something-year-old man on repeated theft charges for stealing hundreds of kilograms of strawberries from uh, greenhouses in the Kimhae area. Uh, you know, he he is accused of breaking into greenhouses mm -hmm. in the Hallimyeon village uh, in the city between December 16th and January 12th. So over the course of one month, this uh, theft took place. If you've seen the interviews for the victims who had their strawberries stolen in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. uh, you see them saying, I hope it's not one of my neighbors. Well, we'll get to who this man is in just a moment, but it turns mm -hmm. out he's awfully close to the farms, geographically speaking. Now, now, That's right. Uh, but I mean, just to get our listeners caught up in case they missed our report last time, I mean, how much frid, uh, fruit, excuse me, did he steal and how much was it worth? You know, initially, um, uh, the, the amount of stolen strawberries the, the local farmers reported was close to 2,000 kilograms, two tons. Uh, but actually, it turns out that he stole roughly 390 kilograms mm -hmm. of strawberries, uh, worth around 7.8 million won or 5,800 US dollars. So what happened was he typically entered the greenhouses uh, during, you know, the, the quiet hours of the night. He had a flashlight with him. Yeah. And uh, each time he stole the strawberries, he fled with around 10 baskets uh -huh. of strawberries in one given time, which he loaded into his car. So it's not like he stole the the, the entire, you know, batch of strawberries in right. one go. He was very meticulous about this. He, he didn't want to get caught, obviously. And uh, it was later discovered that he had sold the stolen strawberries to local bars in Himhe City mm -hmm. and Miryang at dawn, and he charged bar owners around 50,000 won, or roughly $37 per basket of strawberries. Okay, so we already mentioned that strawberries are really costly this season, yeah. so you can see why one might think uh, this could be lucrative. But what else do we know about this man? Well, uh, he is unemployed. Uh, he has never farmed. And uh, mm. he's actually a longtime resident uh. of the village. So it was actually the neighbor who yeah. stole uh, the strawberries. Uh, he knew that these greenhouses had poor walking systems. Mm. So he took advantage of that fact to commit his crimes. Mm. Uh, the police said that the man has a history of multiple thefts and uh, he was found to have committed these crimes cautiously over a period of two to three hours uh, at a given time to avoid detection. Mm. And the thing is, when asked, I mean, do you know which farms you stole from? He had no idea because he would just kind of lurk into any strawberry farm that That's seemed right. to be a good hit that night. And he would just take that flashlight, like you said, and yep. take baskets of strawberries from seemingly random choices of yep. farms. Uh, how was the police able to track down the burglar? You said it took about a month. 
Yeah, so they tracked down his vehicle, actually, uh, using CCTV TV footage from the surrounding area. We mentioned last week that, that the farms that were stolen from, um, they didn't actually have CCTVs, but uh, the police used the footage from the TVs, uh, the cameras around the surrounding area and mm. apprehended him near a bar in Kim He City. Mm. Now, uh, the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, they're looking into potential accomplices. <sighs> and other crimes committed by the man. It's it's disheartening, right? I mean, I mentioned those interviews. Um, yeah. The, the strawberry farmers were distraught, and they said, I just hope it's not one of my neighbors. It turned out yeah. to be. All right, we'll leave it there for now. The strawberry uh, thief has been caught. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our second buzzword of the day at the Kangwon Youth Olympics. Do you know that this is only the fourth of its kind and the first in Asia? So there's a lot of buzz around it, including ensuring that the athletes remain safe in every regard. That's right. So the 2024 Kangwon Winter Youth Olympics Organizing Committee uh, has taken a rather proactive approach to promoting safe sex among the young participants. And they're doing this by offering free condoms to uh, the athletes. Now, recently, the committee shared the news that uh, it had acquired uh, 3,000 condoms and had distributed them at uh, two different athletes' villages. Uh, you know, 2,500 of the condoms were were sent to the Kangneung Wonju National University Village, mm. and 500 of the 3,000 condoms were sent to the Chongsan High One Athletes Village. Now, these condoms have been made available at uh, the medical centers within these villages. Uh, you know, so athletes can obtain mm, them mm, whenever mm. they need to, you know, make sure that they have uh, <laughs> a healthy sex uh, life. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. During the Olympic period. Yeah. Um, I guess um, one might assume that in conservative countries, traditionally, mm -hmm. that is, I'm not quite sure for us conservative as we used to be, uh, one considered it to be taboo not too long ago. But it's so important we talk about, I, I guess, being safe in every regard. Right. Uh, and if we remember correctly, uh, free condoms were also handed out during the Pyeongchang Winter Games back in the year 2018. That's right. But uh, the distribution of free condoms, this uh, practice actually goes back to 1988, the Ooh. 1988 Seoul Summer Olympics to be exact. <laughs> it's sort of become standard practice since then. Okay. Um, so this initiative started more than three decades ago, but uh, it sort of evolved into a practice uh, in both the Winter and Summer Olympic Games. Uh, and the practice, obviously, it underscores the importance of addressing the health and well-being mm. of athletes from around the world. Now, speaking of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics Games, which seems like so long ago, yeah. back in 2018, <laughs> South Korea actually gave out 110,000 free condoms to the close to 3,000 participating athletes. Uh, that worked out to be, what, roughly 38 condoms per athlete. Mm. So uh, the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games, it sort of set a record at the time <laughs> for distributing the most number of condoms at a large sporting event. I mean, is it appropriate? Yeah, it probably is. And we want to be number one at the Olympic Games, <laughs> setting some kind of record there. Yeah. All right. Uh, the Kawan Youth Olympics is well on its way. Uh, tune into our sports segment, won't you, for That's right. all the latest latest uh, endeavors of the athletes of performing at their highest levels. All right, on to our final buzzword of mm -hmm. the day. Uh, over over the weekend, the Standard Chartered Hong Kong Marathon took place, and we want to talk about it today. Why is that? Yeah, because uh, Hong Kong film legend Chow Yun-fat, uh, he was the, the, the star <laughs> uh, at uh, the recent half marathon that took place. It took place on Sunday, actually. It was mm -hmm. uh, hosted by uh, Standard Chartered uh, bank mm -hmm. and uh, you know Chayun Fat is 68 years old this year and uh, you know this is his second half marathon that he's participated in I mean he's always loved to run mm -hmm. but this was the second you know official like marathon event that he's taken part in mm -hmm. and uh, he participated in the 10k run last year uh, and then he finished the half marathon in uh, an impressive two hours and oh. 26 minutes, eight seconds this year. 
And uh, there are photos everywhere online. And uh, the moment he is seen entering the finish line at Victoria Park, you know, people are so excited. They're cheering for him. You know, he, he ran more than two hours, but he looks pretty dashing, actually. I have to say, <laughs> he's uh, wearing like this uh, all black running gear. He's wearing black shades. And, you know, he's seen smiling. And uh, he, he must have been super exhausted, right? But, uh, you know, he he's still... Uh, very obligingly took selfies with his fans and fellow mm. runners. So, you know, there was good energy all around. And of course, his uh, post half marathon interview caught everyone's attention. <laughs> what is the story behind his wife being able to cut his allowance? <laughs> you know, apparently he had a target. Uh, he, he wanted to improve from his previous uh, mm. record, two hours and 27 minutes. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was not satisfied with his performance this year because it fell short by his target by four minutes, apparently. And he joked that his wife would uh, deduct his allowance because he failed to meet his target by four minutes. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure he was just joking, but yeah. uh, he, he told the press that he would continue to train in the hopes of finishing the next half marathon in two hours and 15 minutes. He added that he wanted to become Hong Kong's Forrest Gump and run around the world. Ah, <laughs> run, Chai Yu Fat, run! Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, he just looked in such good spirits. And you said yeah. he's almost pushing 70. That's, that's kind of a remarkable. You know, people asked him if he ever intends to attempt the 42K full marathon. Yeah. And he said if he can finish the half mar marathon in two hours, he would consider oh. doing the full marathon. And uh, if he trains hard, he said he might be able to accomplish that in his 90s. <laughs> All right. Hong Kong's first gum. Yeah. Thank you so much, Erica, for today's coverage. Okay. Stay warm. We'll see you tomorrow. You too. See you tomorrow. <laughs> If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.